the tech scene, I really need to, to, we need to talk about the city. So show of hands if you are from San Antonio. All right, show of hands if you're not from San Antonio. Oh, this wow. is going to be good. Okay, so, so we have to talk about the brand of San Antonio before we can have our little discussion. And so for those of you that are not from San Antonio, and you tell your friends and family, oh, I got a job, I'm teaching in San Antonio, they're going to go, oh, really, the Alamo. And this is our brand, and I'll tell you right now that um, no local goes to the Alamo unless, unless like, my, my aunt is coming, I have to show them, right? And so, but but also, also, you go to the Alamo, and the first thing out of your mind is, I thought it'd be bigger than that, right? You always thought the Alamo would be bigger than it is. So this is our brand, right? The second one is this is a family town, okay? So no one you ever spoke to said, oh my God, I'm a senior, I'm graduating at UT, I can't wait to pack up all my stuff and move to San Antonio where all the, where all the young, sexy, hot people are, right? <laughs> said no one ever. That is not our brand. Our brand is a family town, right? So if you want a 3-2 in the suburbs in the big yard, pow, this is, that's who we are. This is our brand, and uh, I, I know, I, those are all single people talking right now, okay? <laughs> Sorry, okay, we're, we're trying to, I'm trying to change it for you. So this is the other part of our brand. Our brand is the Riverwalk, right? And again, no local goes. If my aunt Mildred is visiting from Missouri, I have to take her for overpriced margaritas here. And uh, this is, the, so no local goes, to, there is no local sitting under, the, under those umbrellas at any point of the week. Okay, and, and lastly, if you're from Mexico, our brand is shopping at La Quintana, right? That's the one. There are Mexican nationals there right now with walkie-talkies. They're, they're doing it there. This is our brand, and man, I want so so. It is my it is my goal. It is my great goal and attempt today to move you from these from this image of San Antonio to the image that we see down in Geekdom, the image that the tech guys see. That there are more things for young people to, so single people don't put the revolver in the drawer, put it back in the drawer. Uh, that there is an up and coming tech scene that's thriving in our downtown, right here in downtown. And that if you are not ready for the three, two in the suburbs, that for the first time in 50 years, we have urban amenities, we have urban options for people that are not ready for that point in their life with amazing things like the Pearl, South Town, the East Side. And so I want to walk you through that. And so, uh, so let's talk about the, the tech scene. And so the tech scene, you know, for me really starts with a very terrible story that I'm going to walk you through. And excuse me, one second. So is there anybody ever heard of Rackspace? Show of hands. So, okay. Um, I, I worked at Rackspace. I started at Rackspace on a, when it was 2000, in 2001 when it was downtown. I was 20 years old. I had no college degree. And I thought, man, they really didn't run their background check on me. And, uh, and so I was at Rackspace for many years. I worked in their London office for three. And, uh, and so we went public in 2008. And then about a year after that, we acquired a company out of Blacksburg, Virginia called Webmail. And when we acquired the company, the three founders were required to move to San Antonio. And all but one guy did. And this one guy, after we pushed them to move to San Antonio, was having none of it. And after a lot of negotiating uh, and, and, and a lot of you know, tense conversations with our founder and CEO, Graham Weston, uh, he sent him an email that I've tried to dramatically recreate for you here. And he basically said, Dear Graham, I know you're upset about me not moving to San Antonio, but I want you to please stop calling me. Please stop emailing me. I'm never going to move to San Antonio. I consider this a closed matter. And I'll tell you why. San Antonio has no startup scene. It has no downtown scene, it has no urban nightlife scene, and because of that, I'm going to move to Austin. And if you grew up in San Antonio like I did, Austin is like your younger, more handsome, tougher, buffer little brother that steals all your girlfriends. And so, this is just a really demoralizing email. And so, you know, this guy in one email articulated really 10 years of pain that anybody that was a hiring manager at Rackspace had felt. So any time we had to recruit a young single person, this is actually what we hit. And, it, and, and as, as a hiring manager, it really bummed me out. I, I never even wanted to actually even look at the resume of someone who I knew was young and single, because I knew my close rate was gonna be terrible. And so um, Graham at the time was the tri chair of something called SA 2020 um, with Mayor Julian Castro. And he sent the mayor, he forwarded this email to Mayor Castro. And he said, Mayor, this is the city we have to build if we want our young people to ever come back or if we ever want them to consider staying, right? This is the city we have to build. And so Graham, being a, a lifelong learner and 
entrepreneur decided, well, what can I do? What are my strengths and how can I contribute to changing this narrative? And so Graham launched uh, around 2011, three organizations. Um, the first one was Geekdom. Geekdom is really the epicenter of his post rack space initiatives. And it is a collaborative co-working space, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit. The second is the 8020 Foundation, and the 8020 Foundation is Graham's private giving. So every year we get a budget of philanthropic dollars to give grants to public charities and STEM entrepreneurship, and then uh, providing more urban options for our citizens. And last but not least is Western Urban. Western Urban is a real estate development company that has acquired about 25 acres of downtown and is completely transforming it. If you see a crane in the sky, um, it's because they're building a new tower which will break the skyline for the first time in 25 years. And they're also my landlord, so they're amazing. It's awesome, we love Western Urban. Uh, they're really, really awesome. And so, um, but all, all three of these organizations are governed by this one mission statement, and this is really what's uh, very unique about how Graham does business. So at the end of the year, when Randy Smith, who runs Western Urban and I, have to go uh, present to Graham and show him our budgets and P&L, um, that's really 20% of the meeting, and the rest of the time, all he cares about is this mission statement. And so what Graham will tell you is, he, you know, he would like Rackspace to do to San Antonio what Dell did to Austin. And what Rackspace effectively did was create about 10,000 tech jobs. And when I say tech jobs, I mean, I mean very liberal with that phrase because at Rackspace, you had a ton of account managers, a ton of, you know, uh, uh, building reps, you had, uh, you had everything on the center, right? Attorneys, accountants. And so it wasn't just engineers that you needed. Uh, I was an account manager, so I don't know how to code. Um, and I'm very grateful because Rackspace gave me a career. And, uh, and so we are aspiring to pay it forward. And so our mission is to create 10,000 tech jobs uh, in San Antonio. And I think that we're doing a good job. So let's talk about Geekdom. Geekdom is, how I describe it to my mother, is a YMCA for geeks, right? So I'm like, mom, it's a guy where all the geeks come, and it's co-working. And so a YMCA for geeks is how I describe it to my mother. After 10 years at Rackspace, I still can't describe what managed hosting was to her at Rackspace. And so I said, Mom, I'm just tell everyone I work for the internet. I work for the internet. <laughs> and let's call it a day. And so thankfully, I can describe what geekdom is to my mother because she wants to know. Um, and so here are some stats. These are a little bit out of date. And so we are approaching our six-year anniversary in December. And in five years, uh, we have over 1,600 members now. We have over 500 companies either officing full-time there or, uh, or having a membership. Um, we have 8,000 meetings in 2016. Uh, most importantly, we have a severe drinking problem with our members. Uh, 1.74 million cups of coffee is consumed. Uh, there needs to be an intervention. Um, and then our members put on about 500 events a year. So we, I have a very small staff of about nine or 10 people. And so we could not do this on our own. Um, and so our members are really driving the community uh, by holding events and holding meetups. And we have actually a lot of education meetups that will happen in Geekdom, which we're really proud of. Um, so one of the principles that Graham has uh, really set in granite, which is don't ever do anything by yourself. Bless you. Bless you. You know, the other thing that he says is, you know, how can we share our wins? And so Graham is always looking to partner. We never really want to do anything by ourselves. So we have had to go out and get a lot of partners to actually get this ecosystem kickstarted. Uh, the city and the county have been wonderful. Uh, we partnered with UTSA Startup Program. Um, uh, Students Plus Startups is an amazing internship program that we launched. And then we had an accelerator, one of the world's uh, top accelerators outside of Silicon Valley, uh, run four different years of programming through our uh, through our downtown, and those companies that went through it have raised, I think it's, I think actually now it's closer to three, three hundred fifty million dollars. And so our our goal is to get entrepreneurs downtown, to get them in our space, and to get them in motion, because we know a lot of them are going to fail. So the, the the industry stat is nine out of ten startups fail, and so we have to keep bringing people in so that we can get one good one that can start one company and hopefully hire one person. Right? Excuse me. So. In five years, we have had a tremendous uh, amount of uh, press written about our members, not necessarily about us. We have been voted one of the top co-working spaces in the country, the number two co-working space in Texas, and actually one of the top 15 in the world, which we're really proud of. But our strategy to accomplish this was um, a little more nuanced. And so we decided at the very beginning of Geekdom that we would not pitch press about Geekdom, but we would only pitch press about our companies. 
And so the goal was, if we can make our companies famous, then we will become famous. And so our member companies have been listed in every periodical of note that you can imagine, which we are extremely proud of. And so I think to date, um, our members have been listed in about over 900 articles um, all over the internet. Um, at the end of last year, we did a five-year analysis of the impact that we had, and I won't run you through all of it, but our member companies have raised over $74 million of venture capital. This is, uh, for those of you not in the tech world, this is a really huge number because there is this narrative that you have to go to the West Coast or the East Coast to acquire, to, to raise money, and it's, it's just categorically false. And so uh, my boss, Graham, says the, deal, the money goes where the deals are good, and as long as you have a good company that's really viable, you will be able to find venture capital. So. Uh, we're really proud of that. We've had five companies get acquired, and we have over 12 uh, companies that have submitted patents uh, for technology. Um, one of the really interesting things is, when we did this at the end of last year, the median salary of our startups was $65,000, and the median salary of San Antonio is uh, 46. Um, our member companies have created 658 jobs, and by the way, these are all very, very conservative numbers. I would probably add about 25% if I was betting at the uh, blackjack table. Uh, but th these are the ones that I'm happy to go on record about. And so when we did this survey at the end of last year, our companies had 112 um, job openings opening this year in Q1 and Q2 of this year, and 93% of those jobs did not require a college degree. Now, caveat, this is not me condoning dropping out. Uh, but it's very interesting how the, our world is moving to a very skills-based world. And so if you have the skills, you know, that's really what they care about. So a lot of it is going to certificates and things like that. Uh, but it was really a very shocking number. So Geekdom started in the Weston Center downtown, which is not this building, uh, which is a building our owner Graham uh, bought. His family bought it, I think, in 1989. And it, is the, it was the birthplace of Rackspace. And shortly after they outgrew their space, they moved into adjacent building, and the floor racks they started in was the first place the first servers of YouTube came online. And so the first servers of YouTube came online in our downtown, and then about five floors above that, many, many years later, is where Geekdom started. And so our downtown has some really kind of cool, rich tech history. And so when we started Geekdom, we had one floor, it was the 11th floor of the Weston Center, we quickly grew into a second floor, and then Graham called me one day and he said, hey, if we had a building, like our own building, could we fill it up with tech companies? And very naively, I was like, yeah, sure, of course we could. Right? And then about three months later, Randy Smith, the real estate guy, walked me out and said, you see that building? That's the new world headquarters of Geekdom. And I went, oh my god, now i got to fill this thing up. And I never expected Graham to buy a building, but this is what the kids call hashtag, what rich people do. Right? <laughs> and uh, I hope Graham doesn't want to say it. And so I went, crap, i got to fill this thing up. And so uh, what was shocking to me was that we were able to fill this building up in less than a year and a half. And so we have a lease. Thank you. Uh, we have a lease on the top three floors. And so um, all of the stats that you see are really Geekdom kind of doing its thing. And we have a lot of companies on the top three floor. The floor below us, which is the fifth floor, Rackspace has a training facility called the Open Cloud Academy that's training Linux engineers and NetOp engineers, they actually have a really cool veteran program. And so every eight weeks they are pumping out people that, uh, that the tech companies can go down and hire. Um, there's also a very similar company like that that does it just for programming called Coda. They're a Geekdom <coughs> success story that started in our space and, and graduated. Matter of fact, when we moved into the Rand, they got so big at the West Center that they couldn't move with us because they had outgrown their space. Uh, but they're still downtown, which I'll show you in a second. WP Engine is a company out of Austin, headquartered out of Austin. Um, they called me one day and they said, hey, we think we can hire in San Antonio, but we need a small office that could fit four. We're going to try to hire four people. And so we gave them a very small office, and now this is actually not the scale. They have half of this floor. And so they have about, I think, 40 or 50 people um, and, and still growing, which is really cool. Um, Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the Rivard Report. The Rivard Report is a also very, very, uh, very urban-centric uh, periodical, and they started at Geekdom in the Weston Center, and they outgrew our space. And then Jungle Disk is a company, it's a, it's a, it's a cybersecurity company that Rackspace jettisoned after it sold and they are downtown. But the most important part of this whole graphic, the thing that it all hinges on, is this coffee shop right here. Okay. It's under construction and if it doesn't happen, they will string me up, right? I, I will get murdered if this thing doesn't happen. It's very, very critical. And so, um, so hopefully that will happen in the next month. Now what's happened next? 
which has been really shocking, and this is a principle that we really adhere to uh, uh, very rigorously, which is the whole concept of density. We want everything dense. We never spread anything out. We've been asked to put a geekdom everywhere. We will not do it because I'd rather have half as many startups densely located than three times as many spread out because you'll never feel the effects of them. And we're just copying the playbook of the Pearl, right? The Pearl really says, what happens if you put 20 amazing restaurants next to each other? You park once and you enjoy it all. Or really, you know, for the single people, 6th Street, right? I'm just going to park once and I'm going to see what of the 200 bars I can go get wasted at, right? <laughs> kind of the same thing, but not really. And so we have a tremendous amount of companies that have outgrown us. And so all of these companies on, on this little area right here either started at Geekdom um, or were born at a Geekdom, sorry, or started at Geekdom or had an office even that outgrew us. And so they chose to stay downtown. Um, Root and IV was a cybersecurity company that wanted an office at Geekdom. We didn't have any space, so we refer them out. And then this, this really long bar of logos is a former executive of Rackspace who raised a $50 million private equity company. And he is buying stalled software as, a, some software as a service companies and moving them to San Antonio and basically firing their leadership and backfilling them with San Antonians. Woo. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, Our Level is a, uh, is a company, this is actually a really cool story. These were about three or four guys that met in an event at Geekdom. I think uh, four of the five guys are all Mexican nationals, a couple went to Trinity, a couple went to UTSA, UTSA and they, they met in an event at Geekdom and they pitched the worst idea ever. Uh, but they didn't stop, so they pivoted and they abandoned their, their terrible idea, and what they created is something awesome. And so they have, uh, they're called Parlevel, they created a little chip that you can plug into any vending machine, and it will tell the operator over the internet what graphically is in there and how much money is in there. And so um, uh, right now, a vending machine operator is just guessing, I think I need 100 Doritos, and they load up the truck. Well, this tells you uh, in pictures what they have, but more importantly, Every time they sign up an operator, the operator realizes that the, that the drivers are stealing their money because it tells you exactly how much money is in the machine. Which is really cool. so I think they have about 80,000 machines uh, online. Uh, USAA bought a building downtown and moved their R&D team downtown, which is really exciting. And over time, is going to be taking over that whole building. Um, when they bought the building, they had a few open spots. They emailed the whole company that said, hey, anybody want to work downtown? And they got 5,000 responses from their mothership which is really, really awesome. Merge VR, you should write this down. This is a great Christmas present. This is a company that started to gig them. It is about a $79 virtual reality headset that you put your iPhone in and it acts as the engine for it. Um, they also have a new augmented reality cube where when you put the glasses on, the cube becomes your brain and you can see all kinds of crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, trust me, it's awesome. And then last but not least on this slide, I want to point out Cast Tech. So, Woo! all right, we got any Cast Tech people here? Yes, we love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for that, really. So Cast Tech is the new uh, tech high school that's starting um, in part of the Fox Tech building downtown. And the reason they located uh, here is because they wanted to be close to the tech scene. And I think that when you have independent initiatives like this that have nothing to do with what we're going on here, that's when you know you're getting critical mass, right? That's when you know the ecosystem is starting to tip. And so we're really excited about that. So um, this picture is of a very old, abandoned, uh, historic building. And once we filled up our building at Geekdom, Western Urban said, we need more space for tech companies. So they bought this building, it's a 100-year-old building called the Savoy, and we already have, actually, that, that very long list of companies is moving from further away, and they're gonna occupy this entire building. This is the Milam building. It was one of the first buildings in the United States to have air conditioning, and their original marketing says manufactured weather. Right, and so Western Urban bought this building, and the goal for this is to have more space for the uh, companies that are moving downtown to occupy. But last but not least, you may have saw it on the way in from downtown, there is a new crane in the sky, and that crane is going to build this, which is the first office tower to be built uh, in 25 years. It will break the skyline for the first time in 25 years, and it will be the new home of Frostbank. Frostbank will move out of this building, into this building, they'll occupy 60% of it, and then they will sell this building to the city of San Antonio, and the city of San Antonio will consolidate all of their employees in this building, and they will be right next to a bunch of geeks drinking 1.74 million cups of coffee. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then we can all live happily ever after. And so what you can see in this graphic is um, there is a creek, the new San Pedro Creek. Raise your hand if you've heard about the San Pedro Creek. So it, it abuts the garage portion of the, of the creek, and it is, going, it is undergoing a $174 million facelift right now. And so the reason I show you this rendering 
and I walk you through all of these things is because if you were to go downtown right now and you were to take a stroll in this area, you would say, what an abandoned dump this is, right? And there might be some heroin needles in that creek right now. And, and what I want to show you and what I want to do is paint a picture for you of what is coming, right? And these are not, these are not things we hope happen, right? These are not initiatives that, oh, man, I wish someone would fund this. This is all happening, right? This is in motion, and that's really uh, what we use. And so we have had to use this to really sell the future to these tech companies that are moving downtown. Um, so these are some trends. I'm going to fly through them so we can get to Q&A. Um, but because of Rackspace, there have been a lot of companies that have spun out or had the founding teams all quit Rackspace and then start their own company. And uh, all of these either have office that geeked them, currently office that geeked them, or started at geeked them, which we're really proud of. Matter of fact, Mark Cuban is an uh, investor in Help Social, which is really cool. He got really mad at them for buying t-shirts. Um, so this is Brett Pike. He has Jungle Disc. Uh, they're, they're taking a big part of our, um, of our second floor uh, promoter. So just a quick trend there. Um, also, because of our proximity to Mexico, I think that we have uh, a competitive advantage to other cities. I once interviewed the, the, uh, the founder of Coders Link. And he said, you know, in Mexico, there's a saying which is San Antonio is the most northern city in Mexico. And I think that that really articulates it well. And so I think that when we're doing our job right, we're creating a, a very safe, comfortable place for these, for the, the Mexican nationals that we have to really start companies. And Par Level is the company I was just telling you about, the vending machine company. And so uh, we had a space for them to geek them. And then they moved from the West Center with us, and then they outgrew us and moved back into the Western Center. So they're currently there. Uh, cybersecurity. So outside of Washington, D.C., San Antonio is the number one cybersecurity city in the country. UTSA actually has the number one cybersecurity program in the country, I think. Um, and we recently helped them help the uh, chamber launch the very first cybersecurity incubator called BuildSec Foundry that's located out of Gita. And so I think that uh, you will see more and more cybersecurity companies pop up because you have so many um, Air Force professionals, there. the Air Force Cybersecurity Command Center has been located in downtown, I'm sorry, not downtown, San Antonio, and they also have a huge NSA presence. Um, uh, that, the, the funny thing is, if you meet anybody that's in the cybersecurity world for the government, they won't tell you what they do. So you say, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I work for the government. And then you press them a little bit, oh, so what are you doing for the government? And, yeah, no, I work for the government. And they just won't, they just won't break character. So. Every one of them, I think, is Jason Bourne. Uh, or at least I hope they're Jason Bourne. The romantic age. Uh, so we, all, we also have a specialty, I think, because of Rackspace, which is, I, I call it scale companies. So companies that are in rapid growth. And I think that uh, this is what Rackspace did very well. So we had a, a number of companies that did it like uh, WP Engine, where they, they expanded and they grew because we have a talent pool here. Easy Expunctions is actually a really cool company. Um, they can get your record expunged if you have a Class C misdemeanor or below. So they're not getting any axe murderers off the off the hook here. Um, and they started in Austin, and they actually are growing very rapidly in our downtown. So they moved their whole company from Austin here. Um, and then talent. This is a little bit out of date, but basically what's happened is there has been an explosion of boot camps where you take people that don't have a skill, you put them through eight weeks of intense training, and at the end of it, pow, they're creating an app, they're logging into servers, they're doing their thing. And then you've got uh, Cast Tech. Woo! Right here. And I think that our goal, so at Geekdom, we are really like the traffic cops. So when someone comes in, either for themselves or for their kids or for their cousin, our job is to just give them all the options, right? So if you need if you need to get a paycheck very soon, we will direct you here. If you want, you know, if, if a young person wants to know what the path is, there are two, four, even PhD level things going on in our city, which we're really proud of. And so our job is to just get them to the right place, right? We don't really have a dog in this fight. Uh, venture capital. So again, in our world, everybody's talking about venture capital. It's who can raise, uh, who can raise money. And um, in the early days of Geekdom, it was very non-existent. And now we have some really cool things. So the city of San Antonio actually has a fund where they will invest for equity, which is, most people don't know about. Uh, ScaleWorks is a private equity company that's buying companies. And then there's also the San Antonio Angel Network, which Brent Berry's a part of, which is really, every time I see him at Geekdom, I'm like, oh my God, it's Brent Berry. Play cool. And, uh, and uh, their, their job is to connect angel investors with companies that are raising. But the Geekdom Fund, which actually has nothing to do with us at Geekdom, so this is a group of four guys um, that created a, a $3 million fund and um, asked us to license our name for free. So we'd let them license our name, but we do not have any dollars in this. And they deployed $3 million, and it was so successful that they just raised uh, another $20 million fund. And so their goal is to really invest in, really, San Antonio, Austin, and the surrounding South Texas area. 
So why does this matter? So this is really my last slide, and then so so uh, cue up your questions. The reason this matters is that a lot of people do what we do for equity. They do it to make a dollar, and we do not own any percentage of any of the companies in our space, nor do we want to. I don't want to play favorites because our goal is to not own 2% of the next Facebook. Our goal is to create 10,000 jobs. And the reason for that, you know, one of, one of the, sorry, one of the very personal reasons for me that I love this mission we're on is because, right, I have no college degree. I, I grew up in San Antonio in the inner city, and Rackspace gave me a career. Rackspace changed my life. And so every time one of these startups hires their first employee, I think, man, they could be, they could be paying it forward. And so if you look at our companies, and if you were to look at our companies like one tech company, the jobs that we created would have made us the 17th largest employer in San Antonio in just five years. And this is really shocking to me because this really shows you the power of small business. If you research, if you do any research on job growth, you go to Kaufman, wherever you do it, they will tell you that most job growth does not happen from big companies, right? Job growth does not happen because of IBM or Facebook. Jobs happen because of new young companies. Those are the companies that create jobs. And that's really the power of small business. So what we're doing is working. We want to do more of it. And I hope that you will tell your friends and family about it. We do a tour uh, twice a day at Geekdom, so I hope at some point you'll come down, you'll bring your kids, and we would love to show them around. And uh, that's my presentation. Thank you. actually two presentations in one, but I, I don't want to bore you with this other stuff. I just want to get to the end. Uh, I just want to get to the end. And then we'll do q and I don't know where I'm pointing. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, any questions? Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Do you hire interns? Uh, yes, yes, we do. It depends on the startup, but I'll tell you, there's, an, a really, there's a really amazing city program called SA Works, and so it depends on the. Uh, so SA Works is really trying to get uh, high school specific interns into the companies. We have a partnership uh, with uh, Trinity University that we're looking to expand, but I think SA Works is probably the best champion for you to engage, and I'm happy to introduce you to them. What about uh, college students? So, so we have. So we are in our second year of running a beta program. Uh, that we started with Trinity, and we're hoping to expand it as a matter. So we have about 40 interns, and what we do is we pay. Uh, we we want them to get 10 bucks an hour. So we, through 8020, give five dollars, and the startup has to give the other five for the summer. And then we also pay for their living expenses. But I don't know if we'll continue that. My worry is Graham wants to wants it to be 500, and it terrifies me because that's that's a lot of kids. But I'll tell you, the 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 bottleneck of something like that is actually having enough companies. And so, um, you know, we could probably do maybe 100, 200, uh, but our goal is to have enough companies so that we can get hundreds of kids downtown. But we, but we have just started that. We're two years into it. Yeah, yeah great question. Yes, ma'am. That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that, but I can connect you with both of the uh, of the entities that do that because I think that you know. So what we do at Geek them just in my world, and I won't speak for Coda or OpenCloud, is that uh, there are exceptions that we'll make, and we have kind of all the legalese to do that. Um, but I I think that um, if they can't do it now, I don't think it would be too long before we can do it. And actually, I think that there might be some other ways to get them involved with some programs. There's a couple of programs like SoHacks. Uh, is one of them. It's a, it's a high school hackathon, and there's a um, uh, youth code jam is another one where where your your child can still get keep his brain moving on those skills while waiting for for to join a boot camp type thing. Uh, but, yeah, great question. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. I think that um, I think that this is something that we're seeing more and more, which is how do you bring the skills? And I think that what we're really so in in our world, one of the things that's really exciting about Cast Tech is to really see how they deploy, you know, in an actual public school, um, the bridge between the real tech stuff and then you know the blended learning model of applying it to kids. 
And I think that, um, so we are very engaged in that process because we're gonna see this more and more. As a matter of fact, we have seen more schools come through our doors and they're really poking around. But I also think that there is an emerging ecosystem uh, like Geekdom for education, for education tech. And I think that um, if I was going to, if I was gonna make a bet on the next big thing in San Antonio, it, we, you're gonna see an education-ish ecosystem like this emerge. Um, and I, selfishly, I hope it's near us, but it doesn't have to be. And I think that that's gonna be a good place for that. So I would say that I don't really, I don't really know the, I don't know the answer to that question, but I think it's something that we're gonna have to tackle at some point. Yeah, yes ma'am. During your presentation, I noticed you didn't mention computer science at all. <laughs> but I'm curious to know, is that important that the schools are now requesting to have computer science be part of our offerings for electives possible? Well, I'll give you the Lorenzo editorial on that. I think that, you know, I think that the basics of how the internet work and the basics of programming are just like learning a language. And so I think that you need to be, uh, you need to have some, some very fundamental acumen about what they are, um, but I don't think you have to go dive deep. So I think that there are, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you just a story. We underwrote at 8020 a program at Highlands High School uh, for a program called called Code HS, and uh, and what it was, it's a it's a it's a startup out of California, and they teach anybody how to do programming. They have a portal with a little dog, and you type in some code, and it makes the dog move. And they are teaching, they are teaching really computer science the way Stanford University teaches it. Only they've taken that format and put it on on, on the web. So if you go through it, there's a couple of free learnings you can do. And the way that I view tech and computer science is, I have done about 12 modules of that. So I understand what it means to write code. I understand a little bit about it, but I can't code. And, but for me, I now understand the world. I understand it a little bit better. I, under, I know what they mean when they say things. At Rackspace, it's the same as how does the internet work when you do it, when you type in a command request, it hits a server and it goes and it bounces, it does all stuff. I think that this is actually what we need to be teaching, which is, hey, just like you know any language, you need to understand the very basics so that you're not completely ignorant about what's happening. But I don't think that full-on, full-scale computer science is really what's needed because not everybody's brain is really attuned to that. And so my brain is really not uh, built for uh, long code and mental calculations. I'm really a people guy. And so I think that I would do well, I would do poorly if I was assigned to a curriculum that had me go all the way into computer science. I don't know if that answers your question. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've done it in the past. Actually, we did it in Highlands, um, and so I think that it's very important. And, and and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I've learned is that you go in front of your students, and you probably know this better than me. I'm just I'm just figuring it out now. Is that nobody wants to see a guy like me? They want to see the cool guys with like purple hair and you know nose rings, and because those are the guys really making it happen. You you're not going to imagine yourself being me, you know, in a in a colored shirt, right? You, but you can imagine yourself being these other guys. And so I think that part of it is it's the whole near peer model, which is you know we want to we want to bring in the guys that are actually doing things so that they, the kids can get excited about it. But I do think that so we've done it. The answer is yes. I would I would also say that uh, we should engage Tech Block, right? Who really you know, I think that Geekdom really represents the startup community and TechBlock represents everybody. And so I think that they would give you a, a better cross-section of uh, companies to, to bring in front of your students. Yes, ma'am. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> Grand, <laughs> Grand West's story is so unbelievable. Uh, you, wouldn't, you couldn't even imagine. So on his father's side, um, the patriarch of the Weston family is a guy named Garfield Weston who started a cookie and bread empire in Canada and England. And, they, and it's, they're absolutely prolific entrepreneurs. But on his mother's side, it's even more unbelievable. There is a movie on iTunes, actually, about his mother's brother called Lord Montague. And, and you're thinking exactly what you're thinking. That is the Montague you're thinking about. The, the original patriarch in Graham's lineage was a lawyer to the king, and he bought this estate in, in England called Beaulieu Estate. And this guy was the patron of William Shakespeare. And William Shakespeare's first two plays were, were put on on an estate that Graham's mother grew up in England. Graham grew up in a little ranch 
in New Braunfels called Marion County, in Marion County. And his father immigrated uh, with, with Carolyn to Texas after a bunch of family drama. And so Graham grew up in Marion County on a cattle ranch um, and would spend his summers in this estate where his mother grew up uh, in, in her, and her brother, Lord Montague, was in the House of Parliament and her father, actually I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I don't know if this is in the movie or not, but his grandfather commissioned the hood ornament of the Rolls Royce for Rolls and Royce because they were his friends. And, uh, and, and so when I met Graham, I didn't know any of this. I just knew he was an amazing guy. And one day I was working at Rackspace, I was, I was 20 years old, and somebody came out and they said, hey, Graham doesn't want to be in an office, he wants to be where all the action is, and you have the only open cube, so he's going to sit with you. And I thought, oh my God, he's going to see me, he's going to hear me on the phone, he's going to realize I have no idea what the internet is, and they're going to walk me out the door. <laughs> and I think that, you know, I think that if you, if you ever meet a humble person, I don't think you go away saying they're humble. I think you go away saying, that person was incredibly nice and really interested in me. And to me, that's really what Graham Weston is. Graham is interested in you and not about him. And I think this is what makes him so inspiring, is that he genuinely cares and the things that he does are not selfish in motive and they are not for a return. And I think that um, his legacy will be truly amazing. And so I, will, I, have been, uh, I have been attempted to be recruited away by many people and I just, you know, for more money, and to me, the mission is worth it all. And, you know, he has a way of making people feel very valued. And I have always felt immensely valued under him. And I just, I mean, I, I obviously, I think the world of him. And so he is, so he really considers himself to be a San Antonian. And all of his and his family's success has been in San Antonio. And so he has a huge heart for this city. And you can see in the work that he does. And that's really what's inspiring for me. And so as a... You know, when I was 20 years old working at Rackspace, and I would look at him and Lanham and Lou, our, 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 uh, our leaders, they were just such good role models. The way they treated people, the way they ran their business, the transparency they had, their ethics. And I think that uh, he's a, that's my long-winded uh, version of Graham, but he's, a, he's my hero. Yeah. And there was questions over here. I don't think I've hit this in there. Uh, no? Yes, sir. Sorry. Yes, sir. I'm curious, are there lessons that y'all talked about um, when you want this mission to be different from that? Um, yeah, I think, uh, well, I think a better answer, uh, so, the, you know, the answer is there are many lessons that we've learned, many things that we would like to pivot from, and once a year, Graham will make me what he goes, go to school on ecosystems. So he makes me travel to other cities and study them. And, uh, and so we have learned so much. And anything that you have seen in our presentation that worked is because we did it wrong or we went to another city and studied them. And then we said, this is a tactic that we can bring back or we can bring back a deviation of this tactic to San Antonio. And so the intern program is a great example. We went to Detroit to study that and they are running this crazy 1500, you know, they got a thousand students coming every summer. And, but the way, but, but where, they, where they hooked us was they said, the student cares about the job. The company cares about the work. We don't care about that. We care about sales. We care about students imagining themselves working in Detroit because no one imagines themselves working in Detroit, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, and I thought, what a, powerful, what a powerful idea that is. And so we basically are running the same thing and it, and it works. You, we bring in you know, 40 Trinity students that are in the Trinity bubble right now, right? And they go, oh, I didn't know there was place to work down here. I didn't know there was a coffee shop. That, you know, I didn't know there was a yoga studio, right? These are things that I don't know anything about. But I think that I think the whole idea was who does it well? And when you look and when you look at Dell, I think that Dell created this effect called the Dellionaires. So there's a lot of people that made a lot of money. Um, that actually wasn't the case of Rackspace. And so what we've had to do is to say, how do we compensate for this thing that we know is a tactic that worked? So how do we get creative and do that? And really the way we did it was um, the Geekdom Fund, you know, is, is uh, actually, I'll show you the, 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 so you're forcing me to go into this presentation that I, I swore I would. Uh, but I think that one of the principles in ecosystems is that you have to shine the bat signal, right? And you have to say, <laughs> there is a place where this is happening. And the reason that's important is because there are, there are followers out there, there are champions out there, that are, there are people that wanna help you but they don't know your cause is out there until you shine the bat signal. 
And and the story I'll tell you about that is this guy Michael Girdley is he's a he is a he is an original gangster in our ecosystem, and he had nothing to do with Rackspace, never worked at Rackspace, never knew anybody at Rackspace, no one in Rackspace has ever known him. And so he read an article about Geekdom in the early days, and he just showed up one day to volunteer, right? No one ever heard of this guy, and he fell in love with the mission, and so he started Coda, right? He came to me and said, "Hey, can I just rent this area right here to do this?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." Actually, no, it's even better now. He, uh, he volunteered, and then he got an office with one other guy that he had never met, and they were commiserating about the lack of programmers. So he said, well, let's start a company. And that's actually how it happens at Geekdom. So he created Coda. It's now one of the biggest uh, boot camps that we have. Then he said, we need a fund. Runs, I'm going to raise a fund. Can we, can we have your name? Yeah, awesome. As long as you're not asking me for money, that's great. So then they created a fund. That's a $20 million fund. Then he said, we don't have enough angel, net, uh, angel investors, so he created the Angel uh, Investor Network. And then when Techstars left, he actually launched a, an accelerator. Oh, I gave it. And so I just go, this is the effect of the bat signal. A guy that no one ever heard of, right? And I think this is actually what nonprofits do terribly. You have to shine the bat signal because in the nonprofit world, that guy's a donor, right? He's a donor that doesn't know you exist because you haven't shined the bat signal. And so I think that when I look at Austin and I look at the Dell effect, I think that the Dellionaires just penetrated the ecosystem and started doing activity where we have to rely on the crowd. We have to rely. I just sent oh, your information yes. to my uh, senior college son, so if you get a phone call or email. All right, <laughs> all right. That's winning. Winning right here. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think that, uh, see, you guys are, this is, this is what happens with teachers. You just can't ignore a teacher. When a teacher says, do it, you just got to do it. So this is principle one of ecosystems, which is you can't control the community. Um, and, and I hope to answer your question with this. And so many people come to me and they say, hey, Geekdom's doing this, but can we get them to do this? Can you get all the geeks to do this? And my response is, I can't get the geeks to stop flushing paper towels down the toilet. Right? But, but, but here's where I answer your question. What you can do, you can't control a community, but you can invite them to join you on an inspiring mission, right? And I think that this is what these people have done. And so the answer to your question is when you invite people to join you on your inspiring mission, they will then get inspired and start doing their things. And what you want to attract are the people that say, hey, your mission is not my mission. My mission is uh, STEM education or my mission is uh, increasing civic involvement in the city. And our answer is, we want you here, right? Then we want to connect you. And so I think that we, will, we want to attract the people doing inspiring things so that we can help accelerate their things, even if it's not necessarily in our mission. And so our job is to really attract the doers, right? There are many people that say, can you just do this? And I want the people to say, I'm going to do this. Will you help me? So I hope that answers. I'm out of time. Thank you so much for your time.